from the start of my business trip while I'm still in uh, civilization. And uh, I just wanted to put a little preface before the video starts. Um, if you excuse me, I have a little bit of a droopy eye. It's not because uh, I had a stroke or anything. I actually got a bug bite right there that like just made my eye swell up. Um, yeah, so the, the, the thing I wanted to really highlight before the video started is that the video is going to be pretty long and if you're looking for a solution to the problem, cut to the end <laughs> because I screw up a lot of things. Um, there's a lot of ways that I wire the, the thing in the, in the start of the video that's, um, that's not correct and it'll lead you down the wrong path and I don't want to do that. Um, so if you're looking for, again, if you're looking to see how somebody troubleshooted, um, get to the end stuff and, I'll, and I think I did a good enough uh, job explaining what needs to happen to get a regulator rectifier working on one of these things or at least one like the one I found. Um, so yeah, so like I said, skip to the end. I'm not going to leave a timestamp because I haven't edited yet and you're a big kid, you can figure it out. And if I don't do a clear enough job at the end, I'll put another one of these interjections in. Anyway, uh, enjoy the video everyone. Hey guys, before I go any further in this video, um, I want to give a shout out to Electrosport. Uh, on not a paid advertisement, they just were really awesome to help me out um, with this project. When I was able, when I was having problems getting the rectifier working, um, spoilers, I've got the rectifier working, um, and I bought their rectifier, so it's a, a OEM stock alike replacement for single phase alternator. Um, I'll include the description, but um, when I was having problems with this, uh, I was able, I called up their customer service and they said, hey, why don't, you know, is it working? They're like, well, we can take it back. And I said, you know, I, I'm, uh, they said, or we can have you talk to the tech. And I said, well, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not highly confident in my skills here. Maybe I could talk to your tech for a few minutes. And I think all said and done, I got about 20, 25 maybe 30 minutes with their tech I'd have to look at my phone log but it was a while I'll call it 25 minutes um, where I got to pick his brain and this is a guy who's like his job is to like design and build and sell rectifiers I assume so he like thoroughly understood this product like better than um, uh, any one has, has any right to understand what a regulator rectifier is and what it does but what I'm saying is um, I recommend them because, well, I believe they probably have a good product. Uh, hopefully, I, I don't have, I haven't had the bike out on the road long enough to tell you if the thing will survive. But what I can tell you is that uh, their customer service was phenomenal. And uh, barring any other information you may have uh, about maybe one brand's better than the other, those guys were 100% on the ball. And I think they deserve, um, they deserve your business. So um, with, without uh, further ado, Let's get to uh, fixing this charging issue on this stupid Ducati. Today was supposed to be the, um, honestly, probably could have been the final major chapter before I started getting writing on this thing. Well, and then this happened. Yeah, so... We got some more work to do, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess I'm kind of enjoying this, but um, looks like what, if you're quick, those of you who are quick to, you know, diagnose and probably realize that's, that's low battery. Um, so a little background on that. After I ran the bike for 15, 20 minutes, went up and down the street, after rebuilding the forks, uh, I went ahead and I, uh, I, you know, I went back inside and I went to go do some other stuff. Came back out, went to go start it again. I wanted to check something, and th that's when that was done, right? So, yeah. So a little frustrating. The good news is we're getting back into turf that I'm familiar with, right? Most people who've worked on their cars or who would call themselves, you know, mechanically competent could, you know, get diagnose a charging system problem. So, uh, you know, we're getting away from the spooky, uh, <laughs> the big, bad, scary desmodromic valves that are unique to Ducati, uh, and we are getting away from the dark black arts of motorcycle, motorcycle fork repair, right? Uh, we're now getting into you know the straightforward, 
you know, th th there's not a huge difference between a Ford Focus and, uh, and what happens here. I mean, it's all kind of the same stuff. Motorcycles are a little different. They have the stator, voltage regulator, all that, but it's more or less the same. So uh, speaking of all that, we basically have a small number of possibilities what could be wrong. It's, this is, again, ground that I'm familiar that I can just troubleshoot off the top of my head. Um, the first is, of course, that it could be a bad battery, uh, but I don't think that's the problem. This battery, we got it back in December, and uh, it's now June, it's hot, but you know the battery's not that old. It's been on trickle charger most of the time. In fact, you can see it's sitting, it's trickle charged right now. Uh, I don't think that battery is bad. It's been well taken care of. A couple weeks ago, I let it sit for about two weeks without the charger. I mean, that could kill a battery. Batteries are fickle, fickle creatures. But there's a way we can test for it. We can just, you know, straight up see if the system is charging. If the system is not charging, we can move away from the battery. And I'm very confident it's not a problem with the battery. So, um, problem two could be, uh, of course, whether or not it's charging or not. And that will boil down to either the voltage regulator or the stator. Now. There's a couple ways to test that. I'll go through them as I go through them. Um, but the good news is, is that all I need to do all that is uh, just a multimeter. And I happen to own two multimeters. Because for some reason, whenever I need a multimeter, they always disappear. So when I go look for, looking for my multimeter, there's a good chance I'll have to go buy another multimeter because they, send, they seem to go hiding when you need one. Um, anyway, so it could be the stator and it could be the voltage regulator. The difference between the two is, uh, well, I'll talk about it in a little while. Um, there's a third possibility, and I'm honestly wondering, uh, I honestly think there's a good chance that it's possibility number three and that that's just bad wiring. I've heard that sometimes that happens on these, uh, and frankly, I've found some crap wiring. In fact, I think I've put some of it on film, like going like, what the heck is this, you know? Um, stuff that goes well, between the battery and all that. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna get to it. We'll go ahead and film some of this troubleshooting. I'm, this is, I think, one of the first ones where I don't know what's wrong, so I'm gonna go look for the problem. Everything else up till now, it's kind of funny, right? It's been like, oh, I know what's wrong, and I need to fix that, and then maybe trying to figure out how to fix that, right? That thing is leaking. But here, I got like that extra step. This shouldn't be too bad, um, and then maybe even later tonight I can spend some time, uh, some, some spend some time doing those last little bits that I had thought we were ready to do. Anyway, let's get to it. Okay, we're gonna go. I multimeters. <laughs> if I remember, oh good, I didn't turn that one off. I know this is the one that works good though. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and get a reading on where the battery is out. And we're going to watch the uh, multimeter to make sure that we, that we know how healthy the voltage is on the battery. So I'm going to do two tests here. First, I'm going to just take a look at the battery. I kind of already know that the battery is going to be at a healthy 12 point something volts because probably right out of your frame there but there's the battery tinder there the light is green on it so that the battery tinder has been fully charged so i know that the battery tent so i know that the battery is um it should be well, unless the battery tender is goofed up you know the battery should have 12 volts so i'm going to go ahead and set this to dc volts i'm not going to give a tutorial here but you know i did learn something the other day you know these numbers here <laughs> are um that actually stands for the voltage level. So if you go up here, that shows you up to 500 volts, 220, just about what we want, right? So we're gonna go on red to red, black to black. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'm sure you probably can't. I'll read you out the readings. We're going on here. We got a solid 13 volts. Actually, let me go ahead and take the trickle charger off just to make sure that's not interfering. Take a look again, it might be a had less 13.1 that's a very healthy battery so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now um, I've already tested to make sure that it's rolling free so uh, it shouldn't go anywhere on me I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn it on 
prime the pump, and with the pump primed, it should go a little bit less, 12.1. I'm going to just go ahead and stick these probes in. So I can one hand it. Do you think the chances that they'll stay? That'll go. All right, ready? So we currently have, with the light on, 11.9. And nothing's happened. We have 11.9 volts still, which is exactly what we had with the engine off. So the battery's not charging, which is bad. I bet if I let it sit here, this will just go ahead and decrease as long as these don't move around. Okay, so we know uh, we know we got a problem here, right? Uh, so now what we got to do is go ahead and. Um, dig into this damn thing again uh, so much for having it all together oh well <sighs> okay we've had a quick dinner break and now it's time to go back for it and uh, so what we got over here I've taken the battery cover off and these these are the wires that I was talking about earlier that, let's see, I'll move that up a little bit so you guys can see it better. Anyway, these are the wires I was talking about that I was concerned about. Now, part of the problem is that right there is the voltage regulator. Um, for those of you who don't know, a voltage regular, regulator, regular, burr, 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 burr. A voltage, for those of you who don't know, a voltage regulator, um, well, it, it's a pretty critical component. And when one of these things conk out, uh, the, it, it usually it breaks in the regulator and so it just stops charging the battery. There's kind of some fail safes in there so that you don't get a fire. It's kind of like a, that's part of what it does. But looking at this, shit like this never makes me happy to find. Like, and this is going to the voltage regulator, are you kidding me? So I'm just gonna go ahead and undo this and see what's under here. And I can almost guarantee I'm going to find some wires that are, like, twisted. This is some Mickey Mouse nonsense. Yeah, let's see what we got. Hopefully we got something soldered. Oh, my God, we have solder. Oh, my God. It's a freaking miracle. Okay, well, I was kind of thinking that could have been it. I'm pleasantly surprised to find that. I don't know why. I always, something like that, you know, I always think it's not hard to put some freaking heat, heat work shrinking on there, right? That's the easiest way to do this. Um, all of this, though, oh boy. I'm going to have to go chasing these wires down. Look, here's another one that's wrapped. Here's another one. What in the world is going on here? <laughs> None of this looks good. Okay, I'm going to do some, uh, let's take a look here. This, or if this isn't, go ahead and take this off the clip. So I have a feeling this wire is the uh, line that goes to the regulator, or excuse me, to the straight stator. So the stator is in here. And I'm just going to hold on one sec. Yep. Okay. I found the other end of it. That's, Ooh. that's the wire and that goes to stator <sighs> covered in electrical tape. Oh, good. I don't think it comes out of the factory that way. So we got something to test there. Um, it could be we well. So to test on to take a look at that, we're gonna want to make sure there's continuity there. Um, there's also checks to do. Uh, we can do on the stator and the alternator. It's uh, excuse me, the voltage regulator itself. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and go through those tests. Um, 
depending on what's going on right now, I might have to pause, go help out my my wife with my kids. It's you know part of dad life, so this might be piecemeal over the over the couple week uh, over the next couple of days. But I'm gonna go ahead and dig into it now. Okay, quick update because I wasn't filming it. Um, I've gone ahead and checked the stator. Now the stator is the least likely candidate. These things don't tend to burn out. Uh, they tend to stay pretty, they're pretty robust. You know, it's hard to whack one. It's almost always the regulator. Um, but given the history and age and everything, I'm not ruling out bad wiring. I'll have to get back in a, I'm going to think about this overnight, give it some strategic thinking. I think I'm going to end up buying a new regulator though, because I think it's got to be what it is. I mean, my Jixer had a bad regulator after like two years of ownership. So um, just looking over here, I'm going to switch. So just looking over what we've got here, it's a little hard to tell, but basically this jumble of wires comes out of the regulator. And we have six wires that go on, but then it gets a little confusing. So these two come from the stator. And the check is to, you're supposed, you should be doing it at the stator. I just did it here just to see if there's a chance that the stator is healthy. Um, but the check is to see if, the, if each lead has continuity between them. So the, the electricity should be able to flow out both one way and out the other um, with at least two uh, ohms of resistance. I was getting six ohms, but you're supposed to measure it at the base. This is a wire much further, which tells me that these wires are also healthy. So that tells me that those wires are probably good. Then coming over here, we have, let's see. So this bundle here, according to my wiring diagram, there's two, you can't see it, but there's two red wires that meet at the regulator. And I think they come up here and they join into one lead. I'm not sure why it does that. I'm going to have to ask the group. And then this other bundle of wires, is, this is the one that was really tripping me out. But this line goes to, uh, I think this is the light, the low voltage light, which didn't come on. So you tell me. And then uh, see how there's, there should be a plug there, which is missing. That should go to ground. I know from the wiring diagram that that brown wire goes to ground. But then when I started figuring that out, I noticed, oh, there's this extra wire here that is joined, right? So this wire is supposed to come up and click into there and ground. And if you follow it, it comes to here. So it's grounded. Hey everybody, talking to you from the future here while I'm editing the video, and I just wanted to highlight so I don't lead anyone astray. Um, I'm wrong here, and uh, basically that black wire, it is going to the ground, the negative terminal on the battery, but as far as where it's plugged into the regulator rectifier, that's actually wrong. Uh, that black wire that comes out of the rectifier on most modern ones is a dummy wire. Uh, it Back in the day, it had some voltage sensing capacity, but it doesn't work anymore, and it's just bypassed now. Uh, manufacturers actually put that wire on there just to make the bike look stock. So uh, the proper way to wire this is to run the ground to the housing of the rectifier. Uh, this kind of tells me that the uh, previous owner, or perhaps the thief who had the bike in his possession for a while, one or the other, one of those guys didn't know what he was doing, and... Uh, Maybe that's a reason one one of the reasons the bike sat for a while. So anyway, yeah, I didn't want to lead you on a straight. So I think the wiring is okay. I'm not a super fan of this. I don't like I don't like twisted. I don't like electrical tape. It's like to me, it's just so. It's like, come on, man, have some pride in your work. But okay, um, you know. Anyway, so we got we got this. Uh, I think what we need is a regulator. So we're going to keep investigating and I'll figure it out. All right, got this all set up. Here's a question. The, whoever worked on this last, ad adapted it so this is the ground line. You can see it there. And it clearly plugs in right here. But somebody added an extra line here for the ground. 
I don't know if I'm going to follow along with that. Or, you know, maintain that or just go the way it is stock. I think I'm going to go stock here on this. No particular reason. See if it works and if it doesn't, that'll be the first thing I change. Jamesy. My video for YouTube. It's being filmed right there. What's the video? My phone is taking the video. James. I can see you from the from it. That's the idea. <laughs> I can see my hand. <sighs> um, Dad, what is this speaker? It's the microphone. It's recording you right now. Look, Lev. Oh. Okay, Dad. Filming? Zero head. <laughs> I can see you with zero head. Yeah, yeah. Hi, right, Is that the end of your video? No. Oh, you have Nowhere a one. Nowhere clear. Nowhere even close. Okay, so I got the uh, everything hooked back up. We'll go ahead and give it a shot. Um, right now, I got 12.5 volts with the. With the bike sitting here so we'll see how we do. Get some power. It's a good sign. Fuel pump primes. So we had 12.5 sitting and 11.8 uh, running. So I have to go through, let's see what it's at now. 12.3, so I just ran the battery down. Well, we're gonna have to check some other okay, stuff out. So it is the uh, next day after the great disappointment of not getting that regulator. Um, and like I always do, I often, you guys know I will often stop filming and messing with the YouTube crap and start worrying over the bike exclusively. Um, and that's of course what I did here. So I ran a couple of tests and I'm just gonna log this here. Um, you can see the two yellow wires are now once again exposed. And I've done a couple of things here. I've also cut the regulator uh, almost completely back out of the circuit. In fact, the only thing that's holding it in is uh, uh, this white wire that uh, feeds into the um, uh, it does the generator light. So, uh, so what we got is I ran through a couple tests. Um, one of the things I did was I backed up and I re went through the troubleshooting procedures that the Haynes manual outlined because I was pretty convinced that the stator on the other side of the bike was not the problem. And just for a myriad of reasons, not the least of which being the fact that regulators tend to die. This is like a very common problem. So uh, there is one check that I did not perform, which is called an unregulated voltage check. And if you kind of follow the meaning of those words that they're in their raw form, unregulated means with, you know, no regulator. Um, and so basically what you're checking is the alternating current that comes out of these two yellow wires. That's why I'm kind of highlighting these here. These two yellow wires are the wire, the, they're the only two wires that the stator feeds. Now, bear in mind, this is a single phase system. If it was a three phase system, I believe you would have one additional wire, but I've never worked on that. So anyway, these two wires are, uh, 
uh, they're pumping out alternating current. And something to make make this make sense, because a lot of people don't understand what the difference is between alternating current. Um, a lot of a good way to figure it to picture it is to picture rope. So if I got these alligator clips here, it will serve as a rope. The, 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 again, this is oversimplification, but essentially what happens in direct current is the energy that the electricity gives is through a direct motion. Um, so you could think about it in terms of a string being pulled along, right? And that's why you have a positive and a negative. Um, so you, so whatever is riding off of the string, you'd almost think of a pulley running off of that string to do other things. And that's kind of what happens. You, ha you have the current go whoop through the wires and it only goes one way. On an alternating current, it's alternating and it's, it's kind of a weird thing. But if I sling this through here, alternating current more or less does this. Okay, it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's why there's the two yellow wires. It doesn't matter which way they get plugged in. Um, but yeah, so that that's just one thing, one reason to, just to picture why there's two yellow wires, why it kind of like doesn't matter which way they go. It shouldn't matter. Uh, but what should matter, this is the old regulator, is what comes out of, if you look here, you've got three pairs of wires. You have this black and white, this red wire, and the yellow wire. So the energy goes in through this yellow wire as alternating current, and it's doing the back and forth, back and forth thing. In the regulator rectifier, it's, tra it's transforming that electricity into direct current. And the direct current comes out of these two red wires, the positive end, um, and uh, the circuit is completed through this black wire, right? So, uh, so this is your ground wire here, right? Now, it's a little weird, but you can see here at the end, the two red wires are connected. I believe after doing some reading, the reason that they do that is um, the, the, the load it can be easier shared through just one wire. Maybe that there's maybe there's a function that you know these regulators get used on a different bunch of different machines. So maybe there's another function, but best I can tell, um, it's it all it, well. I I'm for certain it all goes to one place, right? So what I've checked with the unregulated voltage check is on the other end of these two yellow wires. This is the dead one, by the way. I measured the alternating current coming out of the yellow wires. I've also unspooled them. I think probably earlier on you would have seen this and it would have been all wrapped up in this tape that was just crumbling apart. Um, previously, I checked for continuity on these wires and I checked to make sure that nothing was grounded and nothing is grounded. And the continuity is fine. The resistance is a tiny bit higher than it should be, um, but it, it's, it's so close it should be doing something. Um, so, uh, you basically stick the prongs in, measure the resist the alternating current going between here. Uh, another oddity is that the Haynes manual calls for 20 volts, but everyone I've taught uh, 20 volts at about idle, so I uh, about 1500 RPM is exactly what it is. Even if I just give it a little rev up to 1500 RPM, it's still not quite. Excuse me, it doesn't call for 20. I misspoke. It calls for I believe 30 volts. And mine was putting out about 20. So it's a little short, but if you rev it, um, it'll crank out additional voltage. And so even if at idle it wasn't properly charging the battery, once you rev it, I'm not an electrician, but considering the voltage went up on here and I saw it on the, the uh, multimeter, the multimeter said the voltage would spike up to like... Uh, the numbers were really high. It was like close to 100 volts or something like that. Um, I don't... Uh, no, it wasn't that high. It was... I think it called for 70 volts at 6,000. Double check that before you listen to me. Um, but the... The voltage spike... Uh, either way, no matter what's happening, because this, this crap doesn't know what the engine's revving at. So as long as I'm revving the engine this son of a gun should start putting out direct current and it's not neither is the new one um which 
that was kind of where I was stuck yesterday because I had kind of had the, one of the reasons I'm talking through this is because I wanted to get like a record of like if anyone else is having this problem, the kind of like way you got to think about this stuff. With the at idle, it could be the case that this is not putting out sufficient voltage, but this thing really is like a voltage cap, and so if it's not putting out enough voltage, it would just be putting out a little bit out of here. Um, and considering I could rev it and make it spike to where this thing would actually be doing its job, uh, it's still not doing anything. That tells me that in both cases, mind you, I did this on both, that on both cases these regulator rectifiers are both bad, um, which would be unusual but not unheard of. I've bought parts before. I've, I've had it actually happen with a, an alternator on a car um, where I bought an alternator, nothing fixed it, I thought I fixed the problem. Problem wasn't fixed. I went back and bought an, and retested the alternator. It turns out that the one that I have bought was also bad. Um, and most of the time when an alternator fails on a car, it's actually this piece of crap that fails. So uh, there's a good chance. So anyway, I resoldered back on the new regulator and uh, went to check to see if that solved the problem. So the next check I did was, uh, again, I went and checked it at the battery, but then I just cut the wires off. I'm using this as an example. The, other, the new one is still on there. And I measured out of the red wire and the black wire to see if any voltage is coming through. If this thing is burnt out, um, nothing should come through. And lo and behold, nothing came through. So, um, excuse me, I didn't do that test on this one, or I did do that test on this one, uh, no, I'm sorry. I did not do that test on this one. This is the old, old one. That's the new one I bought. So I did. I performed all of this test on the new one, but I'm just using this one as an example because it's handy. So off of the battery, I did it probed, and then I just cut the wires again because <laughs> the probes were a little sticky. And I stuck the probes right into the end to see if I got a direct current. And again, I got jack squat off of the new regulator. That tells me I'm two bad regulators in a row. Um, that's where we lie today. Because I went back after that, I cut the yellow wires again, just like, am I, am I taking crazy pills here? I tested again, AC current's coming out of both of these wires. I unwrapped them, I checked, there's no damage. These wires are actually, um, these are not the stock wires. Uh, they're, they're thick aftermarket things, which might be why the resistance is a tiny bit higher. But it doesn't matter. The voltage is putting out and the amperage out of here is sufficient. The regulator rectifier should be doing something. So I think we have a dead rectifier. That being said as well, this is one of the volt the uh, fuses here. This fuse, I checked it. It's good. There's continuity. And I checked the um, 3 amp voltage regulator uh, fuse in here. Both are good, so it's not a fuse. We have continuity from ground to the wire that runs to the regulator and we have continuity from everything else but none of that matters if if i get to this rock this is like this is like the water main again if you go to a sl slightly suf barely sufficient uh metaphor of water flowing through pipes when you put a <laughs> when you put the probes in these two uh ends what should be happening is electricity is, uh, you have alternating current going back and forth between the yellow wires, which generates um, current out of the red wire and through the black wire. That's how you, you know, you have a flow. And so with that current, there should be something going on between these two and nothing's happening. Again, these are hooked into the bike. These are not hooked into the bike during this test. Um, they're just out there, right? So. Folks, uh, I think we have a second bad alternator regulator. So, um, it may be that I'm gonna cut this video off here. And the reason being is uh, uh, there'll be another video posted, but I'm going to be having to put the project on hold for a few months um, because I'm gonna be going on a business trip overseas. I'm not abandoning anything. I just won't be here to work on it. Um, if, the if the video continues after I get done talking that means the new regulator came in time and I had time to work 
again and give a shot because I'm going to call these guys up on Monday. It's Sunday afternoon right now. Um, so to get a replacement. So that is, uh, that's where we stand with the, with the charging issue. It's a real bummer because uh, I was really hoping to move on to uh, setting up lights and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah. So I got one of the techs on for Electrosport, and uh, and I was able to, to kind of pick his brain and explain what was going on and tell him why, you know, how I, how I thought I had wired everything correctly. Um, and he's the one who actually kind of advised me to this, and apparently this is a common, common problem. Now, I will point out that I'm not as, that stupid. I wired in the new regulator rectifier the same way that this one was was wired in. So this black wire logically was soldered onto uh, another black wire that went directly to the negative terminal on the battery. Um, and almost like someone who was trying to bypass uh, bypass everything. Now normally these two wires come into a um, they come in, uh, let's see if I have it thrown away. Eh, it doesn't matter. There's a clip, these two wires clipping together. Um, and that wire, those wires go off into different places. There's this white wire goes, and I've known this white wire is just to, for the generator light, it shouldn't really matter. Um, it could be connected or disconnected. It wouldn't have an effect. Um, this light wire I thought was the ground. And according to the wiring diagram, at one point it does connect to ground, but it, it has to do with um, a system. Uh, it's not a ground. It is a um, an older regulator rectifiers. It actually provided a um, kind of a feedback for the regulator rectifier itself. And that was an old system. Uh, so on, so just so you know, the stock, something stock from Ducati, what these came with, was a system from, uh, was a regulator designed um, in, in the like 60s or 70s. It's a way old piece of equipment. And that old way that they would, make, would know whether or not the battery needed charging is they had this kind of feedback wire. Um, and so that, that's what that black wire is supposed to do. But in actuality, according to Electrosport, uh, uh, bear, mind, bear in mind, this is not the Electrosport one. This is the one that was on the bike. But according to Electrosport, on their regulator rectifier, that wire is a dummy. It does nothing. So, interesting, right? It's actually... Uh, so the one that's wired in has been wired to, uh, 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 on the... So you have the wire wired in there, and it goes into nothing. It's, it's just dead. And the reason that it's there, even though... Uh, it, it look it sounds weird and it looks weird. Um, what Electrosport said is this: the model that I bought, it's a ER five fifteen. I, I got the letters wrong. Um, the the part is there to be a uh, stock alike replacement, right? So it's supposed to look and feel stock. So, and because it's supposed to look and feel stock and it's supposed to like plug right in, they put that wire in there as a dummy wire just because people would piss and moan when the wire was missing. But modern versions of regulator rectifier don't use that feedback wire. Um, so it's kind of funny. So it doesn't even need to be wired in. The ground is in the housing. Um, so everything else was wired correctly. This was technically not wired wrong. Um, but important highlight this gets a little bit to the mystery of why the bike was um, more or less abandoned the previous owner stopped paying uh, the registration fees and didn't give a shit when the bike was stolen um, and that might tell a little bit of the story of when the bike was recovered because the bike was stolen and it's not clear exactly where it was when it was stolen but it was abandoned and it was just it was just dumped and usually you know a lot of times Something like this, when it gets when they get stolen, it's like they ride until they wreck it, right? This really wasn't wrecked. It was just kind of like 
they just let it sit. And my guess is probably, I'm kind of, I'm way hype, uh, way theorizing, you know, but my guess is the thieves probably ran out of battery juice when they were riding down the road, right? And they, because they weren't charging. Because let me tell you, this regulator rectifier was not wired in correctly. The one, this one, right? Um, because it should be out of housing. Unless, I might be, might be getting ahead of the game. This might be dead as a doornail, but with a, uh, uh, how do I say this? It, this one might actually be dead and have been wired correctly, but realistically, almost certainly not, because there was no, there's no ground. There, this was grounded to nothing. So that tells me at the very least why the person didn't care. They probably tried fixing it. They tried plugging in that ground wire into this and it didn't work. Now, um, that may be a sign, that might be why that, that grounding wire might still have been there from a previous, previous, previous owner who had wired it correctly. Um, but uh, yeah, kind of a, one of those mystery solves. So I'm gonna get to it, I'm gonna wire it up, run real quickly through the wiring it up, and we'll start and see if we got success. just about wired up the one thing we don't have is um, we have the ground wired but it's not like super tight wired in um, so it's not permanent but it should it'll give us a, a feel at least um, so what I'm gonna do real quick is just check we got 13 volts it's nice and charged and I'm gonna check here And we got continuity from the rectifier to the uh, battery. So that's really good news. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and get a T. Power's on. You guys remember when I was starting this thing and it, I was dreading every moment? Now I just started. <laughs> Okay, so uh, still not perfect, um, but actually I got a little bit of uh, current through the regulator, which tells me, well, at least it's doing something now. So uh, I'll probably get back in touch with the guys at Electrosport. Maybe this video is not going to be as short as I thought it was. I was really hoping, but uh, the current through, we got current through now when I unplugged it. And, uh, but it was only like half volt, so that's like probably bad rate rectifier. I don't know, I gotta talk to the guys. I'll give you an update here in a minute. Okay, when last we last off, which was yesterday, I had uh, further disappointment, but I think I got it this time. I, I know I said that before, said that already several times, uh, but I think I really got it this time. So, uh, yeah, so I talked to the guys at Electrosport again. Uh, a further shout out to them for being so 
cooperative. And uh, I, I think what we got is some um, some bad wiring, uh, probably on the positive side, considering we have continuity uh, between the wire. I mean, it would be hard for there not to be uh, wiring. So what we're going to do now, uh, because we think the wiring is bad between the on the regular wiring harness where the rectifier puts the, where the energy goes in through the red wire, the uh, positive lead. Um, we're gonna bypass all the wiring harness and we're gonna wire it straight into the battery, which according to the uh, technical guys at Electrosport is kosher. Um, I'll probably go hunting down the fault and try to maybe not, uh, obviously not use the, uh, well, keep, maintain the original harness, but you know, try to get it working better. Um, so eventually I'll splice it back together, but I just want to get it working tonight and yeah, cause I'm cutting up, uh, cutting up on a deadline. Uh, I have like three days left before I leave and, uh, I don't know that I'm going to have time to work on this anymore. So, uh, but I want to get this to a point, you know, if, if the uh, regulator rectifier is bad, I want to identify it, send it back and then come pick, be able to pick this up where I left off when I get home. So, uh, yeah, so let's get started and uh, see how it goes this time. Wish me luck. Okay, wish me luck, folks. I got it wired in. Kind of the same way before where it was before. It's a little bit of a Mickey Mouse setup. You can see I, I got the hour out. The alligator clip um, is what's going through, which is not ideal, but we just need to get a test to see if we got this thing going. So, I'm going to go ahead and power her on. We got a regulator rectifier. Okay, so just idling there, we had 12.8, 12.9, almost, just about 13 volts. A lot of material says 13.5 uh, is what we're looking for, uh, but I suspect a lot of that is just based off of the um, Mickey Mouse wiring I got going on in there. So, uh, I, I'm gonna call it success. We got this, we got this running. Um, so, not on film, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean it all up and button it up. Now, uh, I just wanted to impart a little bit of some of the wisdom I learned um, that maybe some people aren't aware of. Uh, hopefully, it's, it's not just me. Um, hopefully, I'm not the only idiot who didn't know this stuff. But um, one of the things that was happening yesterday uh, was while the... Uh, uh, when I had it disconnected... Uh, boy, I don't know if I caught that on film or not. Oh... <clears throat> You can see that the positive lead out of the rectifier is cut right now. Um, again, I don't know if I filmed that, but I, I cut it again, stripped it, and um, started the bike and tested it with, uh, with the lead raw again from ground to, uh, uh, to the, well, you know, one, one, one probe on the positive and one probe on the negative. Now, that would be that would seem to make sense, right? Because what I'm trying to do is isolate to see if the rectifier is putting stuff out. But there's a, the problem is, this is like, this is the key piece of information you should know. The regulator rectifiers are, um, they're not exactly smart, but they have me uh, mechanisms inside to sense how much voltage they need to put out. And in the case of the battery, they know that, okay, the battery's at about, they're, they're, they're calibrated for the battery, right? So, because they're, they're converting a lot of energy into just about 13.5 to 14 volts, no more than 15 volts, right? Um, and, uh, <clears throat> but what happens when you put the uh, multimeter on is that the, uh, the rectifier <clears throat> is 
for whatever reason, what it senses that the multimeter is going to want is that it, it thinks the multimeter wants some voltage, but not a lot. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a gray area. The, the multimeter probably doesn't want to be charged, but, um, you know, all this stuff is complicated. But long story short, the signal that's sent back by the multimeter is going to be, hey, I need about, two, or what the multimeter thinks it's hearing is, hey, I need about 2.5 volts. And, uh, so that's why I was getting about 2.5 volts. And when I talked to the tech uh, this afternoon and I said, hey, this is what I'm seeing, he was like, oh, yeah, that's, he knew right away what I was saying, right? So, um, again, shout out to him. So, the, uh, so yeah, so the, recti the rectifiers are, are tricky. They're, they're sneaky, sneaky little buggers because they will give you what they think you want to see, if that makes sense, right? Um, so in this case, what I was not able to detect, and my guess is if I wasn't such a boob when it came to electronics, um, like I know a lot of us are kind of boobs, right? Uh, but if I wasn't such a boob when it came to electronics, I would probably be able to, th th this would be like basic level stuff, but um, yeah, what I failed to detect was the uh, probably grounding somewhere of, or, or just split wire. I don't know what's going on. Um, but there's something that's not getting power from the positive end. There's a break in the chain between the positive out of the rectifier into the positive of the battery. Um, and that's going to, it's just hard to detect that thing because this is like, it, it, it's weird, but there's like a, a back pressure sensor basically. So the rectifier is like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, so that's a key piece of data to know. Um, what else? Well, what we learned yesterday with the rectifier housing was pro is pretty useful to know. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of lessons learned there. Uh, also the bit about the black wire, which is not at all connected. Um, the other wire is connected and it's sending out a good signal. Um, so, I, I, I don't know if you heard me, but I shouted that the generator light came off. So that's functioning. Um, and, the, uh, uh, yeah, so it wasn't before. So that's, a, that's another good sign. So, yeah, we got a good regulator rectifier. I think this is going to be about it. Um, I might have a closeout video uh, here in... Uh, I might have another closeout video. I don't know how, how this is going to release. And again, all, a lot of this stuff is going to be released in odd order. But for the next several months, this is this will be the sign out. Um, this will be the last thing you'll see. Uh, my guess is, is I'll get this published uh, while I'm overseas because I can, I can send video out. I just can't film it because the bike's not there, obviously. Um, and so... Uh, so it'll, it'll probably be a couple, I don't know how long it's going to be until I can you know, get all this out. But um, yeah, I'll see you all in a couple months. Thanks for watching. And uh, uh, one quick, I don't know if I've uh, shouted their praises enough, but Electrosport really was incredibly helpful. Their website, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, of course, include in the description on the video. Um, obviously, I'm not a paid advertiser, you know, I have like, <laughs> you know, I'm not exactly a powerhouse channel here, right? I'm, I'm just kind of recording my stuff, but uh, I genuinely, th they were awesome. You know, they really helped me out. Um, I, I think they got a pretty good product. I've talked to some people said that they, they're using these rectifiers successfully. Um, and um, at the very least they deserve, you know, uh, they deserve your business for, um, uh, just for the fact that they were incredibly helpful and they're like really willing to to listen to people uh, say you know because I didn't want to send this part back if it wasn't bad and I'm, it looks like it's, it's fine it was me um, so uh, yeah so shout out to them and uh, like I said you'll find their stuff below and I'll see you guys in a couple months